Good evening, gladiators in suits. You caught me just um, fixing the buttons of my shirt. How is everyone doing? Let me just fix this part. Okay. Good evening. I hope you are having a great day. It's a hump day. It's a Wednesday. Two more days and it's going to be the weekend again. How is your week so far? Is it chaotic? Is it calming? Is it just fine? So-so? Could you please write in the chat box while we're waiting for some folks to settle down? And of course, if you're logging on, we will appreciate your likes, your hearts. We will appreciate your exclamation marks in the chat box so we get to feel your energy. We're going to have a very exciting topic for tonight. Very positive topic, by the way. It's all about green flags. Okay, It's not the red flag night. It's going to be a green flag night. So green flags that you have an amazing boss. So we're going to give an homage. We're going to... We're going to give all the praises that we can give to the best bosses that we've had in our entire careers. We're going to reminisce the best things that they've done for us. We're going to be grateful to them. And we're going to talk about those green flags. And the green flags that will make you say, I'm lucky that I was given an opportunity to work for someone who embraces mentorship, who embraces the idea that bosses don't just dictate, they also clear the path for you. So we'll talk about that tonight. Okay? All good? Is that an okay topic for tonight, by the way? I would love to hear your thoughts. Looking at the chat box, uh, John Adarlo from Facebook says, good evening. Grace Waya from LinkedIn says, it's a very challenging week so far. Helen says, good evening also. Benji says, hello from Negros. Uh, Khalid says, it's a week of hard decisions. Ooh, I wonder what those decisions are that you need to do. Raphael says, hello from Dubai. Thank you for joining us. Anjali says, hello from Cebu. Virgie says, yes, it's a great topic. It's a green flag. <laughs> we all love green flags, don't we? I mean, it's... I think it's easier to catch attention of people when you talk about red flags. But from time to time, I think we need to balance controversial things or things that annoy us with things that make us happy. The brain, after all, is hardwired to listen to things that are more positively phrased. So we're going to talk about that. Ryan says hello from Jensen. Uh, Mabel says hello from Saudi. Jerry also says hello, good evening. Thank you. Shout out from Negros Oriental says Wesley. And JC also says hello. Len Len says hello from Makati. Len Len, are you still in the office? That's why you're, uh, I'm not sure. Maybe you live in Makati also. CJ, CJL says hello from, sorry, CJ says hello from Davao City. Ikai says hello. Thank you for this free session. Looking for more interesting topics. And thank you for joining us. If it's your first time to join us, Thank you. I hope you get to learn a lot. Lo Lois from TikTok, thank you for your gift, by the way. Jules also, thank you for sending us a rose. Okay, gladiators in suits, the rules of our Q&A is simple. As much as you can, please stick to the topic. The topic is about what do you think are the green flags that will let someone know that they're fortunate enough to work with an amazing boss. Of course, if you still have other questions that may be pertaining to, let's say, uh, quitting your job, job search. Addy on TikTok, by the way, sent us a rose. Thank you also for that gift. If you're talking about changing lanes, if you're talking about having a hard time working with a colleague, you can still ask those questions. And we're going to be targeting, again, 15 questions in today's session. Now, as usual, in the middle part, around 9.40, 9.30, we are going to give away tickets to our upcoming workshop, free tickets worth 1,799 pesos each to our upcoming workshops at the SMX Convention Center that is happening on July 28 and 29. 
Now, TikTok folks, because I don't get to display so many things on the screen, if you are interested, this is where you can catch all the details of our workshops, all four of them. That's leadership, social media marketing, that's also public speaking, and also business writing. The ticket is each $1,799 for three hours only. And I feel like I'm live selling here, by the way. And I am. Uh, and if you'd like to know more information, you can go to this website. I'm going to give away five free tickets to TikTok folks later on. And then for Facebook, LinkedIn, and YouTube, we're also going to give away two tickets each. Okay? Folks on Facebook, LinkedIn, and YouTube, you're seeing it right here beside me. These are the workshops that you're going to be checking out. And here's the catch. You also get to bring a plus one with you. Okay? You get to bring a plus one because I know how it feels to attend a workshop or a conference alone. It's lonely, right? And sometimes you're more concerned of the people around you rather than focusing on the screen. Sometimes that happens for, you know, I'm an introverted extrovert, as I'd like to say. I'm very good in the, I'm very good on stage, but I don't think I do well mingling with others uh, when I'm alone. This is why I often tell people, if you happen to chance upon me walking along the streets of BGC with my dog, sometimes when someone says hello, I get surprised. And it's not because I'm snobbish. It's because I'm just not, I'm just shy. I'm a bit shy that way. <laughs> okay. So, gladiation suits. Let's answer your questions now. Could you please start typing in the chat box your questions? And again, this is about managing bosses. It may not be a question. It can just be a comment. After all, we're talking about great bosses here. Okay. Virgie Tompang says, I already bought your books. I read them before I sleep. Thank you. Siguro naman hindi mo ko napapanigin ipan, Virgie. But thank you. I hope you get to learn a lot of lessons from our best-selling books. Our books are available in National Bookstore, Lazada, Shopee, Fully Booked, etc. All four of them. And we're going to show them later on as well. Okay, Emil Dinan Padilla says, It's a green flag when our boss gives us the freedom to move around the organization. There is no micromanagement. I will say that if I were to choose my top three green flags for an amazing boss, it will be this answer is going to be one of them. Great bosses, amazing bosses will find a way to empower you. At some point, if you're able to prove to your boss that you can do things on your own, meaning... You can preside meetings on your own. You can respond to emails well. Your manager does not need to intervene. Neither does she need to make it look like that you're just an assistant or a sideline. I think an amazing boss at some point will let you do things on your own because they are aware that one of the things that make us engage in our job is autonomy. The ability to decide what's the color of my PowerPoint slides, what's the font size, what choice of word will I use for talking to this customer? We don't like it when someone imposes things on us, especially when we know that we ought to do what we ought to do. Okay? Okay, I'm looking at... Uh, folks, Call Me Abby on TikTok is asking, what is your advice for new leaders? A lot. I wish I can... You know, I, I think I can spend an hour on this. But quickly, for 30 seconds, my answer would be, number one, get to know everyone in the team. And I don't just mean professionally, but personally. Because understanding what your people do as a reason for why they work will help you understand why they wake up in the morning, why they get to the office late or early. Is it because of their family? Is it because of their ego? Is it because they're a go-getter? Is it because they want to be promoted in the future? And understanding their motivations will help you be able to identify what next steps should you take for this person to progress also in their career. That's the first. That, I think, is one of the most important things that I will do in my first week as a new leader if I'm managing a group of people. Okay. Shello on YouTube says this, it's a green flag when the boss has a good anger management. Gosh, I so agree. Thank you for raising this. Because sometimes even if the boss is nice, 
the person might explode when something wrong happened. Oof, I feel feeling ko tinamaan ako dyan. You know, this is one thing that I'm still working on. Uh, and sometimes I feel guilty because I conduct leadership workshops, but I am also aware that when my temper really gets out of hand, I sometimes uh, I can sometimes utter hurtful words. So what I've been learning for the past three years is that if ever I get so mad at one of my people because they did something that I just couldn't understand why they did it, I will let go of my hands from the laptop or from the smartphone. I will disconnect for a bit so that I can stop my fingers from typing something that I think I will regret later on. I do that. If I'm talking to a client or to a partner or to anyone else on email, and I know that the email, I'm going to use this word, I think the email is stupid or the person is stupid and I get irritated about it. You know what I will do? I will go offline. I will still write my email response. But I will pause and I will go out for some fresh air and then I'm going to go back and read that email again and tell myself, Jonathan, is this the email that you really want to send? Is this the email that you want other people to read? And that's when I realize, nope, I don't want them to see me like this. I'm going to be better. And so at least I'm able to let go of my feelings already because I have typed the words, but I'm going to delete the entire email and start anew with a calmer more relaxed, way kinder, Jonathan, as well. So thank you, Shello, for typing this in the chat box. Ferds Barcelona on Facebook says, green flag if the boss knows how to separate his heart from his mind. That's so true. Sometimes bosses make emotional decisions that they will regret later on. And sometimes I think amazing bosses are those we're in, even if it may hurt certain people, but not too much. Sometimes there are painful decisions that they have to make because it will benefit more people in the end. I agree, Ferds. The ability to keep your emotions at bay so that your decisions are based on company protocols, what's best for more people rather than what's just best for one person or selfishly what's best for them. Okay. Okay. I am Corix on TikTok has a very interesting question. And he says, curious as a leader, how do you unleash an undiscovered talent or skill of your member? I will expose them to multiple types of projects. So for example, if one project involves more writing, I'll expose them to that. Another project involves more speaking, I'll expose them to that. Another project involves talking to vendors or strangers, I'll expose them to that. Why? The more they get exposed to different types of skills, the more you will be able to compare which of the 10 skills they're good at. And this is why the way to discover is to spread them across different types of projects. It's a trial and error. If you only keep on exposing them to one type of project and they're not good at it, you'll always think that they're not good in general. But maybe you haven't been exposing them yet to other types of projects. So I would do that. That was question number four, by the way. I'm keeping track because I want to answer 15 questions tonight. Okay. Jumel Cantalejo on TikTok says, here's a green flag. The boss is receptive and not egoistic and open for ideas. I'm so, I so, so agree with this. I think an amazing boss in meetings, when they found out that they are wrong, they will admit it and they will acknowledge the person who said what was right. A great, ama an amazing boss will always say, team, as much as I'd like to know what this is about, I am not an expert about this. Can I request if there is someone in the team who can enlighten us about this topic? I think amazing bosses are going to be humble to say that out loud to the team because it's not about being right. It's about identifying what is right. And that may not come from them. It may come instead from their other teammates. Okay. By the way, can I just say all of you guys are giving me a lot of green flags. So thank you. I'm also going to say this. You know how... Can I get an exclamation mark if you guys have seen some of my videos on TikTok or Facebook about great leaders? Like I have this video about signs that you have a great boss or a great leader, part one, part two, part three. Can I get an exclamation mark? 
Yes? Maybe you've, you were able to catch this live because you discovered us through those Facebook Reels or TikTok. So here's one thing that sometimes moves me and not in a good way. There are a lot of people who comment on those videos and say, ooh, that's not true. What kind of leader are you talking about, Jonathan? Are you delusional? And there are a lot of people who will say, in my company, that never happens. What you're talking about is a lie. And whenever I see these kinds of comments, slightly I do get irritated, but a bigger part of me rather feels sorry for these people. I actually feel a bit more of pity. Why? The reason why these people are talking about hurtful words is because I think they also are hurting. Why? Because I think in their career, they have never experienced an amazing boss in their life. Can I get a heart in the chat box if you guys agree? Yes? That's what I th I'm thinking of. And so a part of me wishes, I wish that in the future, Anna, Joey, whoever that person who is commenting, I wish that you will have an opportunity even just for once or even just for one week that you will get to taste how it is to work with an amazing boss who makes you feel that you are supported and cared for in your career. Because while they do not exist everywhere, they do exist. Can I get the letter E if you guys agree? They do exist. There's not so much of them. I agree. And sometimes it can be like looking for a needle in a haystack. I totally agree. But they do exist. And so whenever someone comments on my viral videos and they complain that I always talk about things that are not true in real life, I wish I can have this telepathy, this telepathic power, and shoot the message with them. Well, if you've never experienced this kind of boss, what do you think, therefore, is the problem? And I think the solution is to question your status right now. Is this the company that you're supposed to be working for? And is this the right boss that you're supposed to be spending the rest of your career outlasting them, assuming that you can outlast them at some point, right? So I pray for them. <laughs> I pray for them. I'm saying this because I've had bad bosses. I've had toxic bosses. When I was in Globe Telecom, um, I left my last job because the last boss I had, while I think she is a good person, was not a good boss. It led me to resign and quit because there was this one moment and one day that I just had enough. But on top of that, I've had amazing bosses. I mean, shout out to Rita, my first ever boss in Globe Telecom, who I'm going to meet tomorrow for dinner, who remains to be an amazing friend of mine. And these are the kinds of bosses we're in. They know you inside and out because they know how you work, but you don't have the awkwardness that you are under them anymore. And so you get to ask them questions about your career. And it makes you know your relationship uh, relationship even richer and richer. Okay. Ooh, okay. Question number five. I like this question from Mark Frias. What if you are, you have the right boss, but you're not in the right company? Okay. There are two ways of answering this. Number one, I am a believer that no matter how bad a company is, if you have an amazing boss, the boss will be able to shield you from all the wrong things in the company. Or at least they'll be able to buffer all the bad things. Like for example, if other members of the departments outside are toxic, you have a great boss who will always defend you if ever you get bullied. If the company does not always support merit increase or promotion, but you have an amazing boss, I think your boss will be able to defend your promotion because they're just so damn good in explaining it, why you deserve it, to the management team. Can I get another exclamation mark if you agree with that? Yes? That's one way of looking at it. The number two, however, is you may have an amazing boss, but your boss is politically weak. What do I mean? Your boss is an expert. Your boss is a master. Your boss is intelligent. But when it comes to elbowing relationships with other people, such as HR, other department heads, she also gets bullied. And so this might not be enough for you to be shielded 
from the other bad things that may happen in the company. So it can go both ways. Yes. So here's the hoping that you have, if ever you're talking about a friend, Mark, if you're asking this for a friend, okay? I hope you are. You have the boss who's the first type that I mentioned a while ago. Okay? That was question number five. Uh, Lillian on Facebook has another response here. Green flag is when your boss recognizes your efforts and does not take credit for anything that their subordinates have accomplished. I so agree. The ultimate role of a leader is to make more leaders out of themselves. The ultimate role of a leader is to make other people shine. And they will never be insecure if their people even become way better than they are because they know that their people's success is part of their success. I'm going to push further. If I have people who become even way better than I am in the future, I will not feel competitive. I will feel thankful and grateful. Of course, a part of me feels like, oh, someone has surpassed me. It's normal to feel that way because you're a human being. But I think the more overwhelming feeling should be, gosh, I'm so proud. And I am excited because I was part of the training that this person has undergone in order for them to become like this. I'll give an example. If any of you who have attended my workshops... And let's say you attended my Boost Your Confidence workshop, which is, or business writing workshop, which is all about improving your confidence level. And then later on, you message me and you say, John, I was able to finish my job interview and I think I got the job. And then later on, you'll tell me that you really got the job. I'll be the happiest person on earth because I feel that a part of me was shared with someone and it got converted into something that was even grander. And that, I think, is the definition of love. Love is sharing happiness to someone, even if that happiness is not yours. It's purely about that other person. That's love, right? So thank you, Lillian, for sharing this green flag also. Okay. I'm going to call out participants, by the way. We are about to do our trivia question, which means we're going to be giving away free tickets to our upcoming workshop at the SMS Convention Center. Please take note so you can have more time. The only way to be eligible to join this workshop, to join this contest and win a ticket in the workshop is that you have to share our live stream on your page. Okay, please do that now. If you do that, you will be able to get a label beside your name that says, Anna has shared this live stream. So that applies for Facebook, LinkedIn, and also TikTok. Please do that now. We're going to give you a few minutes more because I'll start my contest in 10 minutes. Okay? Oh, I, I feel sad for this. The trusted affiliate shop says this on TikTok. I have experienced this many times. I need to decrease myself or I need to limit myself because my bosses feel threatened. I feel so sad. I feel so sad when it comes like, you guys are familiar with the 48 laws of power, which isn't really laws. Huh? They aren't really laws. It's just part of the marketing title by Robert Greene. I had a video also about this and I get surprised. A lot of people mock me about my statements. And my point is, if you're working for a boss who feels insecure that your ideas are way better than theirs in a meeting. If you have a boss who feels insecure that you are reaching your sales quota and the boss doesn't want you to shine brighter than they are, that for me is a red flag because that is a boss who will always find a way for you not to succeed to your utmost and fullest potential. They will find a way to limit it so that they remain to be the, one, the number one and that you will be relegated to the number two spot for the entire duration. That's a red flag. Okay. I'm looking at the chat box. People have shared their Facebook accounts, uh, Facebook live stream. Thank you. Okay. Bambi Deer also says the same thing. Green flag, not a credit grabber, and not narcissistic.
Oh, I like this. From I am Corex again. Green flag. Someone who always sees a future leader in each of his or her members. I so agree. Again, the ultimate role of a leader is to make more leaders out of others. And it's a green flag if the leader envisions that if he has, let's say, five direct reports, I want Anna to become a CEO. I want Anna to become a vice president. I want Joey to become like this. I see you as some... And sometimes they will even suggest what are the future plans that you can take on. In every evaluation meeting about your performance, they will talk about your plans in the next three or five years in the company. That's a green flag. Lendl Khan, this is question number seven, is asking, as a boss, what are the parameters that you follow before you ditch or you terminate a member from your team who has a dynamic interest that is not aligned to your goal? Hmm. Okay, I'm going to question the assumptions in this. I'm going to... Well, I'm going to challenge the assumptions here because I don't think it's worth terminating someone if they just happen to be not aligned with your goal. Because as long as they're, again, goals are subjective. But if the person is meeting their deliverables assigned to them, the person is able to get things done that you've asked them to do, it doesn't mean all the time that they're also aligned with your goals. Maybe at some point they want to leave the company in one year or two years' time. I don't think you should ditch the person. I think your goal is to be able to convert the person and make them realize that on top of achieving the sales targets or the reports, they also have to align their goals with the company. Okay, If Lendl, and maybe your sentence here is just different interpretation that I'm doing right now. If what you meant is, when do you say that you have to let go of a person if they're not performing well? A lot of uh, two things. A lot of things, but let me limit it to two things. Number one, if I have given this person two to three chances, I've given them an opportunity to step up to a job, and I've given them the right instructions, I've given them the right training, but they're still not delivering as expected, I think it's a reason for the person to say that they're not the right fit for the job. That's one. And number two, if I have experience at even just one, one incidence where in integrity is damaged or questioned. Things such as stealing, lying, falsifying documents, all these things. I, these are examples that I will never give a second chance. And the reason for that is because if you had the guts to do it, it means it's part of your DNA. And if this opportunity opens up again in the future, I will not be surprised if it happens again. Okay? Michael, sorry, Michelle Kahlo, green flag, a boss who respects the non-working hours and weekends. Thank you for raising that, by the way. And a boss who does not micromanage. I so agree. Weekends are not quiet days for work. Absolutely, weekends are for resting and for recharging. That's it. No excuses. If ever you will ask people to do some, something, it must be something so urgent, something so grave that if you don't act on it, it can mean the downfall of the business. That for me is excusable. Another excusable is prior to the weekend, you've already asked for help and you've justified the reason for help. Or number three, the person's going to be properly compensated. The person has consent that they will be paid overtime work for it as well. Okay. Question number eight, Veronica Garcia, a very easy question to answer. Is it normal for a supervisor or boss to humiliate or shout in one shout at one of the members of the team? No, no excuses. I think that no matter how bad the person did, I don't think you need to do it in front of others. I understand that you can be so emotional about it, but I will recommend that you do it in private. We always recognize and praise people publicly, but we apprehend them privately. Something that still keeps their dignity intact. Because remember, it's not just the two of you working together. They're working with the rest of the team and their reputation matters. Okay. 
Ayan. Ferds, Barcelona said it here. Green flag for bosses. They praise in public and they reprimand also in private. Marilyn Borbor, green flag if the boss accepts criticism. Thank you. I agree. They don't see criticism as offensive. They see it as points of opportunities, points or opportunities to become better. How can I be a better leader for you? The biggest room in the world is the room for improvement. Okay. Alice and Samsung on TikTok, this is question number nine, says, what can you say about a boss or manager who has a conflict of interest in the company? From the very start, this should have been mitigated. I wish, Alice, that someone else in the company, such as other senior leaders, are made aware of this. Because if people are going to operate according to this, then others are also going to have the license to say, well, if he has conflict of interest, then I can do the same thing. And that's how you have a race to the bottom of the pit. I will appreciate that this is something that's made known to HR or to other folks who are decision makers. Okay? All right. Gladiators in suits. Before I go to question number nine, I want to open the floor now for our contest. So we're going to ask a trivia question. And the first folks who are able to answer it correctly are going to win prizes to our upcoming workshop, Facebook, LinkedIn, and YouTube. These are all the four workshops that you can win. 1,799 pesos for each ticket, and you get to bring a plus one. And for folks on TikTok, if you'd like to know uh, what modules am I talking about, what four workshops am I talking about, you can go to this website. You can read the outline of our leadership, social media marketing, and also public speaking, and business writing workshops, okay? If you guys are ready, can I ask the trivia question now? What do you think is the category for tonight? Anyone? What's the category for tonight? What do you think? Anyone? Okay, I'm going to make this, this, is, this doesn't happen all the time, okay? This doesn't happen all the time. But I'm going to make this sweeter deal. So there are going to be multiple people who will answer the question, right? But of all the five winners on TikTok and the six winners, two from Facebook, two from LinkedIn, two from YouTube, the first person from all of the winners who will get it right, I'm going to give away our best-selling book. And I'm going to get this signed. And you can claim it in the workshop itself. Okay? And please approach me when you claim your free book. Is that cool? Our book, by the way, bestseller, National Bookstore. You can ca capture it there or in Fully Booked. Also available in Lazada and in Shopee. Okay? So what's the category for tonight's trivia question? Tonight's trivia question is about food because I've had early dinner tonight. Okay. Batis uh, sent a rose, by the way. Thank you. Uh, call me. Sorry, I can't read this properly. Thank you for the gift as well. Food. Is food okay? Yes, because I'm hungry. Okay, so the category is food. My question is this. You guys are all good? Ready now? Fastest fingers, huh? So I'm going to look at my multiple screens. The first, the first folks, five on TikTok, two on LinkedIn, Facebook, and YouTube, you all get the tickets. But the first among all of those who got it right are going to get the book as well. Okay. Category is food. My question is this. This element, which is also found in food, which is the reason, which is a reflection that the food is likely salty, is a culprit for high blood pressure. What is this element that you can find in the periodic table of elements? Okay, I'm going to give you a few seconds for this. And this is why, you know, this is something that I wish my high school or college had a nutrition class because we don't have that nutrition class. It's usually an elective class. I wish all of us are made aware that if a certain food item has higher sodium content, it's bad for you. 
Like if you look at chips, chips can have like 300, 400. Cup noodles, my gosh, cup noodles is 1,000 milligrams or more of this content. And by the way, you're supposed to only have 3,000 milligrams of this per day according uh, according to the RDA. Okay? So the correct answer, ladies and gentlemen, okay, which means you have to keep this in moderation and you have to keep track. If you ate cup noodles in the morning and another cup noodles at night, you already are quota. You should not be eating more because that's how you get high blood pressure. Um, you can also have urinary tract infections or whatever it is. The correct answer is sodium. Okay? Sodium. Now, I'm looking at the chat box. Who was the first person who got this right? Okay? If I'm looking at the timestamps, the first person who got this right came from... I'm trying to compare the timestamps, huh? Give me a few seconds, guys. Okay. It came from Facebook. And my winner... Okay, I'm going to get first. This winner is going to get the signed copy of our book, which you can claim in the workshop together with the four workshop tickets and your plus one. That winner is from Facebook. The name is Christy Breva. Congratulations, Christy Breva. Okay, now other winners from Facebook again. RJ Rigore, congratulations. You're also a winner. And then on LinkedIn, my winners... Sorry, YouTube muna. Kuya, ja Kuya Jax, also a winner from YouTube. Nikki Angela Cruz, also from YouTube. Congratulations. And then from LinkedIn... Do we have winners on LinkedIn, by the way? Yes. Marian Magada, congratulations. And then the last winner on LinkedIn is Mara Joyce Keresi. Mara Joyce Keresi. Now, for all the winners on YouTube, Facebook, and LinkedIn, how do you claim your prize? I am typing it now in the chat box. Please click the link so we can get your email address and we can send to you the information on how you can claim your prize. I'm placing it now. Now, let's cover the winners on TikTok. Who are the five winners on TikTok? The winners are, okay, it's not salt, by the way. It's specifically sodium. But then again, NaCl. That's going to be your sodium chloride. Right? Jing Ten sent a rose. Thank you again for your gift. So my winners are, the first winner is Jana Alberto 5 Congratulations. The second winner is Jim. Congratulations. The third winner is Azri Ayez Riael. Azri Riael. Okay. And then the fourth winner is Mark Serio. And fifth winner is Matty's mom. Matty's mom. Congratulations. Now, folks on TikTok, how do you claim your prize? All the five people I have called out, you can claim your prize by going to this website, johnyabot.com slash free. And instructions are going to be indicated there on how you're going to claim your prize. Congratulations. Let's give an exclamation mark to all our winners before we continue our workshop. Our, sorry, not workshop. Our Q&A session. Sorry, I'm in workshop mode. Oh, but I like this response also from LinkedIn user. Avoid the three S, salt, sugar, and starch. Agree. Okay, congratulations. Okay, we can cover last six questions before we end the workshop. And let me answer this now from Jewel Son, who, by the way, is very bebo and asking a lot of questions. Hi, Jonathan. What can you say about the boss who compliments less compared to a boss who's always praising guys doing deliverables that are easy to do? Is this their new way to motivate their employees even, even if they don't like to do it? Number one, regardless if a task is difficult or easy, I think you should be praising your people for what they have accomplished. I am not going to praise and announce it to the world because if it's something so basic, it should not be announced as if it's the hardest thing to do. But simple things such as, thanks, John. Appreciate what you've done. That's a compliment. Or thanks, John. Thanks for being on time. That's a compliment. Okay. 
if something is even more spectacular than like, wow, John, you've reached your sales target. Amazing. Thank you. Oh, Papa Burger kana, for example. Okay. I don't think you should choose what types of achievements are you supposed to praise and recognize. We should recognize diligently for whatever efforts they've put into it. Okay. That's one. Number two, when you praise people, and Jewelson, I'm going to twist your question for a bit. When we praise and recognize people, please do not give generic praises. Examples of them. A lot of bosses are fond of saying, good job, awesome, amazing. For example, someone has done a one-hour presentation. After they've presented, their only response was, John, ang galeng, good job. My question is, do you really think that the person will understand what exactly it is that you liked about the presentation? They won't. Because the presentation was for one hour, and sometimes if you keep on using generic phrases like awesome and good job, you will sound fake. Can I get the letter F if you guys agree? You will sound like fake. Why? Someone will say, Whoo, good job, though, and you were not even listening during the presentation. You were actually in front of your smartphone the entire time. You see what I'm trying to talk about here. So if you want to give authentic, sincere praises, specify. Say something like, John, amazing presentation. I specifically liked slide number four and number five because you said A, B, and C. That's specific. If you were listening to their conversation to a client, say something like, John, thank God you were able to sell something to the client. You know why the client liked your product? Because in the last part of the conversation, you added A, B, and C. Keep it up. You should always say that to the client. See what I did there? That was very specific. And these kinds of statements will not only make you sound authentic, it will also help the other person understand what exactly should they keep on repeating and reinforcing because they have been praised. Okay? Jewel Sun, I hope I was able to answer your question. Okay, question number 11. Let's look for some more questions. Let's, let's go out on TikTok. Emerson Sarmiento, we've had this discussion before, so I want to talk about this. What are your thoughts on the sandwich technique when reprimanding subordinates? What is a sandwich technique? For some of those who may be unfamiliar about it, when you give a negative feedback or a point of criticism, you sandwich it in between two positive points. So positive first, something that they are extremely good at, something that they have achieved, and then negative in the middle, and then positive in the last part. When is the right time to use this? When you think that the employee is not yet emotionally mature to handle criticism, sandwich technique works. It reminds them that not everything is bad about you. There are a lot of things that we want you to know that you're doing right. What is the disadvantage of the sandwich technique? Sometimes if you spend too much time on the positive part because there's two of them, the person will feel, ah, okay naman pala ako eh. There's nothing wrong with me. My boss called out I did not do well on letter X, but she mentioned a lot that I did well on letter A and letter B. So the employee is going to end up focusing on the positive side and neglect the negative side. So my recommendation whenever this happens, if you have 15 minutes to spare, spend more time on the negative, spend lesser time on the positive, but still highlight the positive, of course. Okay? Can I get the letter L in the chat box if we're learning something so far? And again, feedback. One of, one of my favorite topics whenever we conduct leadership workshops for a company is giving feedback. I think that the Philippines and a lot of Asian countries, we are not good at all in giving feedback to our people. We are a very harmonizing culture. And so because of that, our tendency is if something needs to be said, we tend to avoid confrontations. But at the cost of avoiding the confrontation, the person does not improve. Agree? Do you guys agree? We need to be better in handling difficult conversations. I know it's awkward. I know it's not something that can make people happy, but we are in a business and a business is always after improvement. If you're not going to say it at all, 
no one's gonna see it and no one will find out that they're doing something wrong. Okay? Question number 12. Uh, this is a different question, but let's answer this. It's about job interviews. Mai Mai on Facebook is asking, how do you answer when the interviewer asks you, tell me about yourself? Do you have to share personal or professional? I would do both. You know why? If I talk about my personal life, as long as it's not too personal or TMI or too much information, like I will not share information like, you know, I just pooped this morning, right? I vomited last night because I went out clubbing with my friends. Of course, those are too much information. But I will share information such as I love running. I love watching documentaries. During weekends, I love spending time with my family. Why? You want to imply and send a message to the recruiter that you have a well-balanced life, that you have outlets for stress, that if this job is going to be a demanding job, they will feel confident that you will be able to manage it because you have ways of calming and relaxing during weekends and even during weeknights. You want to talk about that? I will talk about things such as I love traveling. And so by counting so far, I have traveled to 28 cities in the world. Why is that important? Because I'm a believer that if you are a well-traveled person, you also are a very open-minded person. You are a believer that your way is not the only way. There are many ways of doing the same thing. So I tell that. And whenever I get asked, even by my clients, like, John, apart from being a motivational speaker, what else do you do? So I talk about my travels because I want them to appreciate that even if those travels are personal travels, those travels make me become a better motivational speaker. Why? I'm able to gather experiences. I'm able to gather stories. I'm able to gather best practices that we will never see in the Philippines or in Southeast Asia. And I think that's important to be shared to an audience. Okay? Okay, let's answer more questions. Question number... 12. Bambi Deer. Okay, let's do another job interview question because it seems like you guys like that. What's the safest answer to say in an interview why you left your previous job because you got fed up? Okay. This is one of the top five questions I get asked, I think, on a daily basis. You know what's my number one question that's always asked by you guys? Quitting. But let me answer this. In any job interview, it's inevitable that the interviewer is going to tell is going to ask you why did you quit your job or why did you only spend x number of months or x number of years in this job. Regardless if the issue was about conflicts or toxicity, I want to ask you. Okay? And please promise this to me. Never talk about the bad drama that you had. Why? It's going to open a Pandora's box and the recruiter will think that you have a personality issue. John, I'm concerned I'm going to be lying. You're not going to lie because what you're going to tell is the positive side of it, which is the inevitable truth. The reason why you're looking for a new job is because you have outgrown your past job. So I will say something like this. I'm looking for newer opportunities because I think I have outgrown my new my past job. I want to take on a bigger opportunity. I want to take on newer challenges. And I want to experience a different set of people. Because when these people excite me, I think I extremely do well in my job. And I think I can get these new challenges from your organization. Because you guys are well known for that. Okay? Can I get an exclamation mark? Does that sound cool? Always keep the drama at bay. You had a fight with your boss. You don't need to mention it, okay? You don't need to raise it. You don't need to open a Pandora's box. Stick to the positive reason. And we all have the same reasons. We're looking for better opportunities. We're looking for greener pastures. We're looking for more challenges. Okay? Question number 13. And by the way, no one likes drama. If I'm an interviewer and you talk about your problems in your past company, the first thing that I will think of is, gosh, dadalhin niya ang drama niya sa kanyang past company sa bagong company. 
And first impressions are wrong, but first impressions last. Okay? G, by the way, on TikTok says, it's a green flag for a boss when they take the initiative to exercise diversity and inclusion. Agree. You know what the kind of boss I want to aspire? I want to be that boss who, regardless of your age, I will give you an opportunity to shine. So for example, if I'm in a meeting and I have a set of interns and I have a set of adults like 30s or 40s employees, I will not relegate minutes taking to the interns just because they're young. And sometimes that's a bad thing. You know why? If you give the young ones minutes taking tasks, they will be so focused on the minutes that they will end up not contributing to the meeting anymore. And that takes away the opportunity for them to share the best ideas if possibly they have the best idea. Okay? Do you guys agree? Diversity inclusion is so important. I always talk about that also in my talks. In today's world, when we are working remotely, you may be working with someone who's from a different country, a different time zone, a different way of speaking. You have to appreciate that your way is not the only way. Simple things such as, we often tell this in our workshop, if you're attending our email etiquette and business writing, we have a portion where and I say, please avoid emojis in emails, especially if you're talking to people outside the Philippines. Can I get another exclamation mark? Or could you please type any emoji in the chat box? Please avoid any emojis in your emails, especially when you're talking to someone for the first time and when they're coming from a different company, from a different country. Why? I think as Filipinos, as we're very happy people. And we often think that emojis are a way to break the ice. It's not the same for Australians. It's not the same for the Japanese. It's not the same for the French. Some people might even think that if you give them a smiley, people might misconstrue it as if you are flirting with them. Some people might think that you are unprofessional. And some people might think that you sound or look too desperate. Okay, So take it out. And I'm going to flip the coin. Okay, I'm going to flip the coin. I'm going to reverse the situation. If you receive an email from someone requesting for something without an emoji, please do not dismiss that the person is a bad person or a demanding person. Agree? Pwede ba? Right? I hate people like that. Yung bang, ay, ang sungit-sungit naman niya, wala man ng smiley. That's not my job. My job is not to give you a smiley. My job is to request for what is needed. I want to be professional and I don't need to put a smiley. Do not take it personally when someone does not put an emoji or a smiley after they're requesting for something. It is not their payment for you to get the job done. More than anything else, I think it's being immature if you are requiring a smiley just for the person to get it done. Okay? Okay, question number 14. Ayan, I've seen a lot of smileys. Speaking of smileys, if you haven't yet given us a like or a heart, we will appreciate that, please, in the chat box. Or if you're watching us on Facebook and LinkedIn, please click the like button. It will help us reach out to more audiences. It will help us improve our algorithm. We want to thank our TikTok followers, by the way, with our 4,000 likes so far as well. Okay. TikTok again. Question number 14. Is it okay? This is from Jij or JJJ. Is it okay to terminate an employee who is excellent in their job but is a toxic colleague? One, you have to consider first the legalities. Legalities of jobs do not entail that they have to be terminated just because they have personality issues. They need to breach a certain grave policy of the company. So it's not something that you can just easily do. Okay. Number two, if I were to... Uh, how do you call this? Bend the question for a bit. What do you think, Jonathan, instead of people who are extremely good in their job, but their personalities are bad? 
My personal preference is that I will not keep them in my team. Why? I don't care if you are the best seller in the company. If your personality is negative such that it is so infectious that it brings down the morale of the people in the team, then you have a multiplier effect, right? All of your sales targets reached are going to be canceled out by all the negativity that you bring to my people. I'd rather have people who may not be as good but are trainable, and therefore I can train them to become way better than you are as long as they have the right attitude and the personality. Granted, also in life, I think they are not trade-offs. I think it's very possible that you can have someone who is amazing in what they do technically, but also has an amazing personality. Okay. Ayan. Azriel also says, Azriel, can you tell me how do I pronounce your name? I'm having a hard time. It's a tongue twister. But Azriel says, skills can be learned, but attitude cannot change. I agree. To a certain extent, you can change attitude, but it takes so much time for that to happen. If it's something ingrained in you and your personality, it's just hard. Skills can be learned in a week. Skills can be augmented by technology. Skills can be augmented by proper coaching and the right software. Skills can be augmented by adding more manpower. So these things are manageable. Personality and attitude, it's hard. It's very abstract. It involves personal lives that may involve conflicts that can be traumatizing for certain people. Okay? Okay, let's capture the last question, if that's okay. Oh, okay. Cash shopping on TikTok asks this. It's our last question. Do you see it as a green flag if your boss pushes you to advance but uses it not for your benefit? It's a tricky question because if your boss is pushes if your boss pushes you to be better, you still end up benefiting from it, right? Because you were able to up your level from one to two. Okay. So, however, I do think that there are bosses wherein you got better, but they got something also out of it. I will not personally, I will not have any issues as long as it's not hurting me, as long as it's not breaking the ethical rules of the company. And as long as what? As long as it makes the company in a better place, it pushes it with higher revenues, better profit, etc. I don't mind. Okay. Of course, there's kind of sneaky tone to it because if it was something that was normal or legit, my boss should have said it to me. But maybe the boss is hiding from me. Okay? There are bosses like that. But I do think that as long as you're pushed to the next level and you got better out of it, you're still benefiting something also from it. Okay? So, gladiators in suits. Uh, Jojo, by the way, sorry, on TikTok, asks a question that reminds me again. John, when is your season two of your podcast? September. End of August, September. Please wait. If it's your first time to hear about our podcast, Gladiators in Suits, you can catch us on Spotify. The podcast is entitled From Grit to Great, or you can search my name. We talk about career management. Our episodes are 20 minutes to 30 minutes each, and we've had 24 episodes so far. We're on season two now. So please catch us. It's a good way to continue conversations like this uh, on Spotify. Okay, so gladiators and suits, I hope you catch us again. Uh, oh, wait, sorry. Folks on TikTok, huh, in case you forgot, you have to claim your prize here. johnyabot.com uh, slash free. I'm going to also promote again if you guys would like to read more career topics and tips. You can catch our best-selling books available on in Lazada, Shopee, and of course, bestsellers certified by National Bookstore. If you're in Vietnam, you can catch us in Saigon Bookstores. Malaysia and Singapore, it's in MPH and Kinokuniya. In the Middle East, in Qatar and UAE, you can purchase our books in Magrudi's bookstores as well. Thank you.
catch us on our work and our workshops. Uh, registration is still open. JohnYabut.com slash talks. Folks on Facebook, you can see that here. You see that? Okay. And we'll see you guys. I think I will be online. I can't be online tomorrow and Friday because we do have talks for clients. But I will be online on Saturday. I'll be online Saturday morning or evening. I'll find a way. Okay. Thank you so much. My energy is only as good as your energy as well. So I thank you for that. Stay safe, stay dry, and always aspire for a better version of who you are today. Thanks, guys. Good night.